Father, I thank you and praise you. You're a good, good father. You're a holy, righteous father. You've got nothing but good for us, Lord. And Father, I ask right now, as I stand here one more time, only by the blood of your son being applied to my life, it's an honor and a privilege. And Lord, I ask right now, Holy Spirit, that you would walk through these chairs, walk through these aisles, and open our hearts and open our ears and let us receive what you have for us this morning. I have felt your presence and I know you're here. We just need you. We thank you. We praise you for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So happy Father's Day. <laughs> That's about all you'll get out of this sermon. <laughs> I had a I had a nice Father's Day sermon. I had it studied out. I had it ready to go. It was it was in the gun. It was loaded. It was ready to shoot. And the Holy Spirit had a whole different direction. He had a whole other direction. Um, Thursday night at about two thirty, uh, the Lord woke me up. Holy Spirit woke me up. And I'll just be honest with you. I tried my best to go back to sleep. I did. I, Scripture started rolling, words started coming, phrases started coming, and the thought, the, the thought started coming, and I, I rolled over. I do not like to get up in the middle of the night. I just don't. And I, 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 I tried to reason with the Holy Spirit. I tried to bargain with Him. I, just, I was like, I'll remember this in the morning. I honestly did that. I was, I'll remember this in the morning, I promise you. And He's like, no, you got to get up. And so I finally gave in. I, I got up, and... We had some kids over. We had, we had uh, Sean and uh, Sean and, uh, and Will were out, and where I study in the garage, so I didn't, couldn't go out there. And Parker and him were out there. I didn't want to disturb them, so you know what I did? I grabbed a tablet at two thirty in the morning, sat on our bathroom floor, and wrote out three pages of notes. And this is where you got, okay? But I'm telling you, I know it's from the Lord this morning. I know it's from the Lord. If you're going to hear it, it's going to come from the Lord this morning. And the title of my message is "The Power of Persistence." The power of persistence. We need some fathers this morning. This is going to be the, I'll, I'll tie it into Father's Day. There you go. We need some fathers with persistence. There you go. Amen? We need it. It just, it is. And if you got your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Kings 18. 1 Kings 18. This is the passage the Holy Spirit gave me. Sitting there on the bathroom floor. There you go. 1 Kings 18. Verse 41 through 46. It says this, and then, then Elijah said to Ahab, Go get something to eat and drink, for I hear a mighty rainstorm coming. That's exciting. I don't know about you, but that's exciting to me. I, anymore, I, I hear, I read phrases like that in the Bible, and it just jumps to life inside me because I hear a mighty main, rainstorm coming. I hear a mighty rainstorm coming. Here, I hear it. You may not hear it, but I hear it. Amen? And so Ahab went to eat and drink, but Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel and bowed low to the ground and prayed with his face between his knees. And then he said to his servant, Go and look out toward the sea. And the servant went and looked, and he returned to Elijah and said, I didn't see anything. Seven times, Elijah told him to go and look. Finally, the seventh time, his servant told him, I saw a little cloud about the size of a man's hand rising from the sea. Then Elijah shouted, he shouted, hurry to Ahab and tell him, climb into your chariot and go back home. If you don't hurry, the rain will stop you. Could you imagine that? His servant sees this little tiny cloud way out there, and he says, hurry up. It hasn't rained in three and a half years. It hasn't rained in three and a half years. And he sees this little tiny cloud way out there. Hurry up, get in your chariot, and, and get going, because it will overtake you. That's some faith right there, isn't it? That's someone that's in tune with God. Climb into your chariot and go back home. If you don't hurry, the rain will stop you. So soon the sky was black with clouds, and a heavy wind brought a terrific rainstorm. And Ahab left quickly for Jezreel. And then the Lord gave special strength to Elijah. He tucked in his cloak 
He tucked his cloak into his belt and ran ahead of Ahab's chariot all the way to the entrance of Jezreel. Man, I would love to see that. That would be something, wouldn't it? This guy just tucks in his cloak and starts taking off. I'd like to see how fast his little legs were moving, you know? That'd make a great movie. Whew! Outrun a chariot. It was 17 miles, by the way. 17 miles. That had to be the Lord. The power of the Lord. Lord, God can do anything in your life. Hadn't rained for three and a half years. A drought. Amen? And there's a principle that occurs and reoccurs over in the Word of God over and over again. And when you see something like that, when you see a principle that reoccurs and occurs again and again, you need to take, you need to become a student of that. You need to take notes and you need to really focus in on it. Amen? See, a lot of people, they only take snapshots of the Bible. They got snapshot here and they got a snapshot here and they got a snapshot here. Well, they never get it settled for themselves. But there's principles in the Bible that run from the front and to the back. And this is one of them. It's called persistence. Amen? I love it, don't you? Don't be a snapshot. Don't be a tourist. Don't just, don't just be a tourist of heaven. Get it in for yourself. Amen? It's exciting when you start thinking about it. I've only got two real quick points for you this morning. You ready for them? This is the first one. This is what Elijah did. You need to tune your ears to the Holy Spirit. When everything else is going wrong, when everything else ain't going right, when there's a drought, you hear rain when you listen to the Holy Spirit. Now, some of this may not make sense to some of you, but it makes sense to me. And I'm hoping, I'm praying by the end of it, you'll, you'll have sense of it too. But if you're going to be in tune with the Holy Spirit, you're going to have to turn some things off. Amen? If you're going to be in tune with the Holy Spirit, you're going to have to turn the channel on some things. You're going to have to turn some things out. My God will send the rain where there's no rain, but you've got to hear it. Amen? A lot of people will tell you, if you listen to people... They'll tell you all the bad things. But God says something else. God says something else. The Holy Spirit, amen? When you start walking with the Holy Spirit, when you really start walking with Him, heaven has a different frequency. Heaven, they used to sing a song, turn your radio on and listen to the music in the air. Remember that song? Heaven has a different frequency than we have here on earth. And you got to get in tune with it. Whew. Elijah heard a mighty, mighty windstorm, a, a rainstorm that was coming in the middle of a drought. He heard it. And that's the way the Holy Spirit will do when you start walking with Him. You'll see rain. You'll hear rain when there is no rain. When people say that it's impossible, it's not going to rain today. There's not a cloud in the sky. <laughs> There's not a dollar in the bank. <laughs> There's no gas in the car. There's no job in sight. God says otherwise. Amen? I come to speak faith this morning. With God, all things are possible. How many believe that? Truly believe that. With God, all things are possible. Quit looking at your circumstances and get your mind and your spirit in tune with the Holy Spirit. He's speaking things and He wants to do things through you that's amazing. If you'll just listen. Amen. And if you'll be persistent. I refuse to listen to the, what the world says. My God shall supply all my needs. According to his riches and glory. And I'll tell you what. Heaven's got a big treasury. When you talk about the riches and glory. It's much better than any treasury you have down here. All he's got to do is just send a few raindrops. And you've got it. I've come to speak some faith to somebody today. Somebody needs this. I feel it. Whew. You're not alone this morning. I sang that song. You're not alone because I know that's what God wants you to hear. The devil will tell you he's a, you're alone. He don't care about you. 
You're on an island by yourself. God loves you. Amen? He bankrupted heaven for you. He sent His Son for you. The best. I'll listen to the Holy Spirit. He'll never leave me nor forsake me. That's what the Word says. I know it's simple, but boy, I feel it. (laughs) If you're going to walk to heaven's frequencies, you're going to have to turn off the earth. You've got to turn off the earth frequency. You've got to turn it off. You can do it. It's up to you. Wow. I'm going to do something real different. I'm going to ask Kathleen to come sing a song. (laughs) Come here, Kat. I know it's not normal. Oh. But we're not normal, are we? I'm going to play it for you. I hadn't planned on doing this, but on the way in, I... The world will tell you all kinds of things, but that's not what God says about you. Amen? It's not what He says about you. Set my capo down. Nope. I'll grab Dylan's. Thanks, Dylan. God says something different from you about you. Amen. You need to hear this this morning. I know it's not that's not usual. This isn't usual, but this is okay. We got time for this. Amen. Now I'm laying it at 
that's what God says of you. If you're here this morning, I'm telling you, God, if God be for you, who can be against you? Who can be against you? Amen? Who can be against you? I believe that with everything that's in me, don't you? You need to turn your ears into what heaven's saying and not what man's saying. Turn off, turn off the earth. Amen? Turn off earth's frequencies and turn in, tune into heaven's frequencies. I believe that. Here's my second point. You ready for it? It's just not good enough to hear it. It's not just good enough to hear heaven's frequencies. You've got to pursue it. You've got to pursue it. Elijah was a great man. I mean, Elijah was, he did some great things, didn't he? Through the power of the Lord. But he pursued it. Did you see that? In the scripture that we just read, seven times. Seven times he prayed and sent a man out. The same, this, this is the same man that prayed once and fire came down from heaven. Sometimes it'll happen on the first prayer. Sometimes it takes seven. That's what you need to understand. Persistence is the key. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. That was the first message I preached when we started the church. He's a rewarder, but persistence is the same thing. Persist after Him. Amen? The same man prayed seven times. It's a principle that reoccurs and reoccurs and reoccurs in the Bible. When you start talking about persistence, people are like, well, I don't know. That doesn't sound very attractive. It's not very attractive, but it's real. God rewards that. He rewards it. Don't you believe that? Persistently seeking and obeying the Lord gets rewards. Could you imagine? Hasn't rained three and a half years. And you being Elijah's servant. You being Elijah's servant. Come here, Austin. You can be my servant. <laughs> and I pray. I'm Elijah. I pray. I tell you, go look, go look for the cloud. He goes. Comes back. Comes back. What'd you see? Nothing. Well, let me pray again. Pray again. Go, go look again. Go look again. Okay, come on back. Now, some of us will say, this is too much like work. What, what, nothing. I'll pray again. I'll send you again. Send him again. By the third time, you're thinking, well, this is a little embarrassing. My servant, I, I'm a little embarrassed about this. You know what I mean? This is, I'm just telling you, I'm being real with what people think today. Did you see anything? I'm going to pray again. I'm going to sit and go, go look. He goes, looks again. Third time. That's the fourth time right there, isn't it? This is the fourth time. You know, this is what some of us be thinking. I, I'm really worried about my servant's welfare. Him walking all this way. You know, I may, I, I may stop at four. Now I'm going to pray, pray it again. Send him again. Send him again. By this time, most people of today are thinking, well, God really doesn't love me. He really doesn't love me. You see anything? Go again. I pray again. Six times. Six times a lot of people be saying, I'm mad. God don't hear me anymore. I'm just being real. Did you see anything? I'm going to pray the seventh time. You go ahead. Pray the seventh time. He comes back. You see something. What do you see? A little tiny. Oh, God, you're making fun of me now. There's just a little tiny cloud. That's what most people would say today. You can sit down. But I'm telling you, that's how exactly how people think. They think that God's their little thing you can order around. Boom, 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 boom. That's not how he works. He's working something inside of you right now. Sometimes it takes one prayer, sometimes it takes three, sometimes it takes four, sometimes it takes seven. But you need to persist after Him. Amen? 
I believe that. I'm a product of that. I live my life that way. Sometimes I get tired, though. I'll be honest with you. You get tired. But the Bible says if you get get weary and well-doing in due season, you will reap if you keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Amen? (laughs) I've heard. How many's heard that? You only pray once. It's once and done. You pray that. I've heard that's that's hogwash. They didn't read the Bible if they prayed that. Many times. Jesus prayed three times in the garden if it'd be possible, take this cup away from me. Amen. We got to be persistent in our prayer life. Persistent. The disciples were in the upper room for 10 days. What if they said, well, this is, this is too much, like, I can't, I can't afford this. My time is too valuable. This is out of my schedule. This doesn't fit in my schedule. Ten days of my schedule. I got fish to catch. I got mouths to feed. How much do you want of him? Amen? Some, so the today's, show, today's people, they'd be like, well, I can't go. I'd miss my show. That's about how much they want the Lord to show up in their life. This is what I wrote on the bathroom floor at 2.30 in the morning. Joshua had a whole, whole, a whole nation of Israel walk around the walls of Jericho six times, not say a word. Could you imagine if he'd have stopped on six? If he'd have stopped on six? God told him on the seventh day, you walk around it seven times. What if he would have said, well, that's way too much to ask of the people. That's way too much. Them walls wouldn't have fell down. Persistence and obedience, persistence and obedience brings you close to God. You'll see the favor of God show up in your life when you do these things. Amen? Jesus taught us about this. Jesus taught us about being persistent. In Luke eleven five, he said this. Luke eleven five, this is Jesus teaching. He said, then teaching them more about prayer. He just got done with the Lord's prayer. Jesus got done teaching them about the Lord's prayer. He said, then teaching them more about prayer. He used this story. Suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight, wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. You say to him, a friend of mine has arrived for a visit, and I have nothing to, for him to eat. And suppose he calls out of his bedroom, don't bother me. The door is locked for the night and my family are all, and I are all in bed. It's me at 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> We're all in bed. I can't help you. But I'll tell you this. Though he won't do it for his friendship's sake, if you keep on knocking long enough, if you keep on knocking long enough, read this. This is Jesus speaking. He will get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. That's a principle right there, isn't it? That's a principle. And so I tell you, this is Jesus. So I tell you, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and it will be open unto you. Everyone who seeks finds and Everyone who knocks, the door will be open. That's good. That's encouraging, isn't it? That's faith right there. That's faith. The Holy At 2.30, I wrote this down. Quit complaining about, to everyone about your situation that can't help you with it. Start knocking on heaven's door. Start knocking on heaven's door. Amen? Amen? Because, see, God don't change because of your mood swings. God don't change because of your circumstances. God don't change because all culture has changed. If the whole world goes this way, I'm going this way. I'm going with Jesus. we got to get that mindset. Don't you believe that? Nothing catches God by surprise. He never says, I never saw that one coming. Nothing catches God by surprise. Nothing in your life has caught God by surprise. 
You need to understand that. Your walk is going to look different than my walk. And my walk is going to look different than your walk. I get really worried when I start seeing cookie cutter Christians. I do. When they all start looking the same, I get worried. Because I don't see that in the Bible. You won't find one cookie cutter Christian in the Bible. There was fishermen, there were kings, there were shepherds. They were people of all kinds of culture, backgrounds. But they had one thing in common, and that was Jesus Christ and Him crucified, risen and coming again. Amen? They had that in common. And that's what we got to have in common. But other than that, you're going to look different than I am. You're going to talk different than I am. You're going to have your own walk. You're going to have your own relationship because God deals with diff- people different ways. You can see it all through the Bible. Some things I just don't understand why he did it, but I know he's God, and I leave it to that. Amen? The prince, there's one thing that remains constant in the Word of God, is that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That's a constant. It don't matter if your relationship's different than mine, and yours, and yours, and yours, and it's all different. But he will, one thing that remains the same is he'll reward each and every one of us if we're pursuing him. If we're seeking Him. I believe that, don't you? I just believe it. I'll just be real bone honest with you. I wrote this, I wrote this at 2.30, so I was a little, little sometimes, you know, you don't know. <laughs> but I get tired of people's faith. I don't know about you. Think about this. I get tired of people's faith hinging on their finances. I get tired of people's faith hinging on their job. I get tired of people's faith hinging on their health, on their marriage. Or maybe they looked at me wrong. So I'm tired of giving up. I'm going to give up on the Lord. Really? Really? People today get depressed if somebody don't like my post on Facebook. Come on. Get real. Suck it up, buttercup. The Holy Spirit, he told me to write this. I'm going to write this, okay? I'm going to tell you what it said. He said some people are missing the miracle because they're too busy pouting. Some people are missing the miracle because they're too busy pouting. Get on your knees and start knocking on heaven's door. Take it to the throne again. 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 If they, take it to the throne again. Take it to the throne again. Just do it. They used to sing a song. Till the answer comes, you got to keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Till the answer comes, you got to keep praying. Keep praying till the answer comes. Amen? That's the way it is. That's a principle. It's all the way through the Bible. I wonder how many are stopping on day six. How many are stopping on day nine? Right? Here's another one that shot out on the paper at 2.30 in the morning. (laughs) Some people are holding back the rain because they're not giving God what's His. Some people are holding back the rain because they're not giving God what's His. Now, you know, if you've been here long, I don't preach on tithing that much. I don't. We got a box in the back for Pete's sake. We don't pass, we don't pass the plate. It's between you and God. I don't know who gives what. I don't. I made it that way from day one, and that's the way I want it to be. Between you and God, it's just like your relationship with God. I can't, cha- I can't change anything about that. But I'm telling you this. Meanwhile, God's sitting in heaven, and He knows exactly everything. He knows everything. He knows every detail, every, every thought I, that goes through my mind. He knows everything. And a lot of, a lot of them are saying, I gave my five bucks. He should be happy. Look, you're, you should rejoice, Lord. You know what He's saying? I gave you life. I gave you earth, I gave you air, I gave you water, I gave you a car, a house, a brain, I gave you children, I gave you my son. 
and you want me to rejoice over the scraps that you're giving me? Woo! Okay. (laughs) You may not want to hear it, but it's good for you. Amen? See, there's an anointing that God wants to pour out. God wants to pour out anointing on you and your family. He wants to pour it out. But you might be holding it back. And I'll tell you this, the, the anointing won't fall on the first milk toast prayer you pray. It's going to take some time. You're going to be in your prayer closet and you're going to have to really seek out the Lord. The Bible says, if I seek Him, I will find Him if I seek Him with my whole heart. Half-hearted seekness won't get it. I don't know if that's right. I don't know if I said that right. What? Half-hearted seekness. Seek, seeking? Okay, seeking. There you go. But I'm just telling you, there's deeper waters. Don't leave anything on the table this morning. So many people are walking away from the table. God has a feast for everyone that's here. He has a feast for everyone that's here. And many people are walking away from the table because they won't spend the time. It's just the way it is. They stop on the sixth time around the wall and don't go on to seven. There's a deliverance. There's healing. On that table, there's healing. There's deliverance. There's finance. Everything that you need is on that table. There's a greater measure of the Holy Spirit if you won't stop at nine. Day 10 is when it fell. Could you imagine that? Imagine if they stopped on day nine. Right? It's good. Jeremiah 29, 13. You will seek me and you, fi- you will find me when you seek with me with your, all your heart. All your heart. Half-hearted seekness won't get it. It won't get it. I believe in this room, though, this morning. You need to listen. I'm telling you. I believe in this, in this room this morning that some people, this might be their seventh time. This might be your tenth time. If you'll seek Him again. I believe that with my whole heart. He hears you. He just gonna, he's, sometimes He's seeing how, how, how much you really want it. I believe that. Salvation's free. Salvation's free. But how close you want to get is how bad you want it. It's true. It's true. I hear a mighty rainstorm coming. I don't know about you, but I hear a mighty rainstorm coming for those who will believe, for those who will pursue, knocking on heaven's door. Amen. If you would just bow your heads with me just a minute. I would like to give you an opportunity, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you've been here and you, you've said, I feel the Holy Spirit, I don't understand all the things that, that's been spoke here this morning. But I feel the Holy Spirit and I know that I need a Savior. See, the only way to heaven is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. To accept Him as your Lord and Savior. And if you feel the Holy Spirit, He's drawing you this morning. If He's drawing you this morning. If He's pulling on your heart and you say, I need need to make this commitment to Christ. This altar's open. I would love to pray with you. I would love to pray with you. You've got a wonderful Heavenly Father that is just waiting for you to make a move. And He'll come running. He will do that for you. He will do it for you.